Welcome back to the channel. It's good to be back. I have not consistently posted content here in quite a while, but we're back in business hopefully starting now. So this video is going to be a very broad overview of shift registers, specifically the 595N chip. We're going to go over what happens under the hood in this circuit. We're going to go over a basic circuit we can build to implement a shift register, and then we're going to write some software to show very basic demonstration of how this works. In future videos, we'll cover some applications of using these in projects, but this video is going to be very, very high level overview and a very simple demonstration. To understand shift registers, let's start with D flip-flops. A single D flip-flop has two inputs, a clock input and a data input, and two outputs, Q and Q inverse, which is the opposite of Q. So a D flip-flop works like this. Every time you pulse this clock, the value at the data pin gets transferred to the Q output. So if we change the data pin to high, pulse this clock, the value of Q becomes high. And this is the only way to change this Q output is to toggle the clock. So you can change the data pin as much as you want. Nothing is going to happen until you pulse the clock. So a shift register uses these flip-flops chained together, all sharing a single clock signal. The output of the first flop is connected to the input of the second, and this continues for eight flops. So look what happens now. We transfer the data into the first flop, and every time you pulse the shared clock signal, the value shifts over one register at a time. This is how we get the shifting effect in a shift register. So the 595N chip adds another layer of complexity. We don't just use one set of flops, instead we use two. Let's copy this circuit now and paste it up top. The 595N has two sets of eight flops. The bottom set will be called the storage register, and the top set will be called the output register. In total, we will have two sets of 8-bit registers. Each set of flops will have its own shared clock signal, but there will only be one data signal, which is into the storage register. The output register will not have this horizontal linking, and instead we link each respective flop from the output register to the bottom storage register. What this does is when we pulse the output register clock, it will copy the contents of the storage register into the output register. This allows us to explicitly decide when we want the shifted result to be displayed. Remember, this output register will linger until the next time you pulse the clock. Having separate registers gives you independence between what you're outputting versus what you're shifting. You can shift into the storage register as much as you want, but nothing will display unless you pulse the output register. So this is the circuit we'll be building. I'll walk through it real quick. We're using an Arduino Nano and the built-in power supply is connected to these power rails. The 595N chip has 16 pins. The power pin, this is the 5 volt power supply and the ground power supply, this bottom right. I have these linked together using a decoupling capacitor which is one microfarad. Starting with pin 14, this goes to the Arduino. This is the serial pin, goes to Arduino pin four. The output register clock goes to pin number five and the storage register clock goes to pin number six. This pin is the output enable, it goes to ground and the shift register clear goes to high, five volts. These LEDs all have 10K resistors except for this one, this has 5K, but it's just because I ran out of 10K, so you can use 10K on that. And these outputs, these are all powered from the shift register in alphabetical order. So the shift register has outputs QA, this is B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. These go in order, and they're, they're sent to the LEDs in alphabetical order. So it starts with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So you have eight total. So 
So here I am in this Arduino IDE, and we're gonna start off with a types header file. We define a shift register struct type, and it's going to have three members, which is going to be a serial pin, a output register clock pin, and a storage register clock pin. That's gonna be called shift register. We're going to define the number of bits in a byte to eight, and you'll see where that's used later. And then include this in the main file. So the way the shift register code is going to work is we're gonna have two main functions. One is an init function to declare all of these pins that we built on the circuit as outputs, and then we're gonna have a write byte function. So the init function We'll take a pointer to this type, a shift register type, as an input, and declare all of these members as outputs. So we're going to use pin mode, shift register, serial pin as an output, and repeat this for all of the members of the struct, which is output register clock and storage clock. So now we get to the write function. We're going to call it write byte. It's going to take a pointer to a shift register struct. That's going to be constant because we're not changing anything in the pointer or the instance. And then it's going to take a value to write. So the way this function works is we're going to take a byte value. So we have a byte value and write to the data pen the value of the least significant bit, which is the bit on the rightmost side. If you had a byte such as this, uh, 1101011, we're going to write this value, the least significant bit, to the data pen, and then we clock. Let's type this out in the comment. We write least significant bit to the data pen, pulse the storage register, and then we shift the value. The byte value over by one. We do a logical shift, so that's going to be shift value by one spot. And then you repeat this eight times for eight bits in a byte. And then after you're done writing the byte, you're going to pulse the output register. So, what this looks like in software, we have two local variables one is a counter and the other is a write value, so I'm gonna call it shift val. So we have a for loop for counter equals zero. We're gonna repeat this for the number of bits in a byte, which is eight. Increment the counter by one. We're going to extract the least significant bit by saying shift value equals the input value. So val mask with one, and that's going to extract the least significant bit. And then we want to write that with digital write, the shift register serial pin to the shift value. After we're done writing to the data pin, we want to pulse the storage register clock. So that's digital write the storage register clock to high and then repeat this to low. That's going to shift the value into the storage register. And then when we finish pulsing the clock, we want to right shift this byte value by one. So val equals val right shift one. And then once we're finished writing all eight bits, we pulse the output register clock to high and then back to low to actually display the outputs that we just wrote. So high and then turn it back to low. So this is going to write a one byte value to the shift register output. So to use the software that we just wrote, we want to declare an instance of a shift register. Here I'm going to call it sr1 equals from the circuit we built the serial pin is four. The output register clock is five and the storage register clock is six. So the reason we do this, I'll just add this in, is this is sort of very general software we can write. 
So writing the software this way lets us have as many shift registers as, as we have pins for. So this is very general. You can have 20 shift registers if you have enough pins on the microcontroller if you write the software this way. You just have to declare another instance for every shift register you want to use. So to use this software, we say init. We're going to call the init method and pass in shift register one by reference. So that's going to declare all these pins as outputs. Now, if we want to write a byte, let's compile this to make sure it's actually running. We don't have any errors. So we finish compiling. Let's call a write function, write to shift register one, the value of one. So if we upload this, we would expect the rightmost LED to turn on. Let's take a look at what we get and it does. And now if you write the value of FF, you would expect all the lights to turn on. And we can see that happens. Let's run one more test. If we write A5, we would expect the binary representation of A5 to be displayed on those LEDs, which it is. So this is very basic software on implementing a shift register. Let's take this one step further and make a simple binary counter. So we're going to have a variable x equals zero and we want to write this value we're going to call we're going to call write byte shift register one the value x and then every time x is finished writing we want to increment it by one but if the value gets to 255 we have to reset it because the maximum value you can display with eight bits is 255. so we're going to say x equals in a ternary operator x equals 256 if yes then x equals 0 and if not x equals x plus 1 so let's call a delay to make this a little bit easier to look at and this should create a very basic binary counter we're going to upload it and take a look at what we get so you can see that we have just a simple binary counter this is a very very simple application of this shift register and in the future we're going to have more advanced applications but I don't want this video to go on too long. So again this is a very broad overview of how a shift register works. In the coming videos I'll show you how to use a shift register using a seven segment display, and then we'll go over some very basic data transfer between modules. So I hope this was helpful. Stay tuned if you're interested in shift registers for content in the near future. Hope that was helpful again, and thanks for watching.